Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, yep, I head the Behavioural Research Unit, which is about a 20-minute walk in that direction. A 20-minute walk, because there's not a taxi to be had in Dublin, I made about an hour ago. So as well as being the head of that unit, I'm now very, very wet. <laughs> um, it, for those of you who've come from abroad, it isn't always like this here, I promise. It really, really isn't. This is quite exceptional. Um, OK, I've apparently got 15 minutes to tell you about behaviour change and consumption in the Irish context, a task which is obviously completely impossible. Right? So I'm not really going to do that. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to pick and choose a few findings from some of the studies that we've undertaken in the Behavioural Research Unit that are relevant to pro-environmental consumption. And I'm going to use some of those findings partly to illustrate the kind of thing that we do, but also to construct an argument. Okay? And the argument essentially revolves around an argument that is happening within the behavioural science community. So many of you will have had behavioural scientists, heard behavioural scientists stand up on stage and say, we need to use more behavioural science to try and tackle some of these policy problems. And you may even have heard me do exactly that on a stage somewhere in this city or even somewhere else in the country. I often do. And we, we heard a presentation that was a bit like that earlier, a very good one too, and I agree with almost all of it. But you'll see there are some kind of contrasting views as well here that might come out. Okay? Now, lots and lots of those people around the world have been doing that now for about 10 or 20 years. That is, scientists who believe that behavioural science can make a really big contribution. And all of a sudden, in the last couple of years, they've started having a fight. Right, and this fight is largely confined to nerdy academic journals that you're never going to read, and nor would you want to, trust me, because professionally I have to. Right? Um, but the argument is really interesting, and what the argument is about essentially boils down to this, as to whether to get greener behaviour, we should direct our efforts at the individual or at the system. And that includes the behavioural scientist. Should someone like me be studying how to persuade people or how to put in place nudges or whatever it happens to be to get people to be more pro-environmental? Or should someone like me be studying their comprehension and perceptions of the policies and the system changes that might be necessary in order to make that happen? Now, of course, like any question, you can reject the premise of the question. And you can say, well, of course it's both. Yeah, it is, but policymakers have limited resources and limited brain power, with all due respect, we all do. <laughs> and given that, how much you direct your efforts at different elements really, really does matter. And of course, the interaction between the individual and the system matters too. But nevertheless, the question is worth asking. And in simple terms, what's going to get the bigger return here? If we put our money into big campaigns to improve consumer awareness and information, or education campaigns, for example, where what we're doing is we're trying to get individuals to understand better and have all the information to make the pro-environmental behaviour change that we want, or should we be putting our efforts into tougher regulations and taxation and getting those through and changing the system in a much more orthodox way. That's what the fight ultimately boils down to. Where should we concentrate our effort? Okay. Now, I'm going to show you some results, and you'll see from this that I'm going to essentially move towards an answer to this question Okay, that I think is important. Okay. Now, I'm going to take as read that people care because I don't have time to show you too much. Right, I'm only going to show you one slide from, one of, sorry, from four of our studies, one slide each from four of our studies. We've done multiple studies that show that in terms of values and attitudes, Ireland is in a really good place. We have almost no climate change denial, and we have people who overwhelmingly care about the environment, are worried about the environment, and would like to behave in a more environmentally friendly way. Okay, great. Everyone's values are in the right place. So, we've already heard the expression, is there an intention-action gap? Is it that people just don't behave according to those values? Well, actually, we've gone looking for it. This is work that's actually funded by the EPA. And let me show you something. Take food choice. What I'm going to show you here is derived not from surveys, from asking people simple questions, but actually from diaries where we have people go back through their day and look at the different choices that they've made. For anyone who's interested in looking it up, it's a thing called the day reconstruction method, where you take people back through their behaviour on a daily basis. And what do we find about where people are at? I'm going to split people into different what are called stages of change here. For anyone who's interested, again, this is a thing called the trans-theoretic model, classic example of academics calling something something absolutely impenetrable that's remarkably simple. Okay? And what I'm going to show you here is the proportion of the population that in terms of their food choices on a daily basis and how pro-environmental those food choices are, 
Have they actually contemplated any change? Have they got any desire for change? Have they contemplated change at all? And the answer is actually that despite having pro-environmental values, about 40% of the population absolutely not, hasn't even contemplated or desired that change. Those who have and claim it's impossible to make the change is another 17%. So the majority of the population, despite having pro-environmental -envi values, have no pro-environmental intention with respect to their food choice behavior. Right? There is no intention there. Okay? Now, there are some that do plan to change. Look, we've got 6% who do have the intention. The some who tried it said it was difficult and are dissatisfied with the outcome. There are some who tried it and are satisfied. Bingo, we've got them there, 14% of people. Actually, it wasn't difficult. I did it. I changed my food choice behavior. There are some, this is really good, who've not only changed, but plan to change more. So this is all the positive news up here. And there are some here who failed and found it too difficult. Now, what's the point I'm trying to make here? The point I'm trying to make is there are multiple problems that consumers have in changing their food choice behavior, but it is not an intention action gap. People haven't formed the intention to change behavior. Why? Because the action is all down here. Right? And the action is all down here because many cannot see the need, or if they can see the need, they cannot see even where to start, how to go about it. What's the pathway for me to change? They, they can't see it. So they never form an intention to change because they either don't know what to do, don't see the need to do it, their lives are too busy, whatever it happens to be. That's where the majority are. So it isn't an intention action gap. There is a values and action gap, but the intention is not getting formed. Okay. What next? Well, supposing we dig into that a little bit more and we say, well, Irish consumers, do they understand what makes a difference? Now, this is quite a complicated chart. And what you're seeing here is you're seeing a whole load of behaviors. Not all of these are consumer behaviors. There's things like not littering in here. And we gave people, in an incentivized task, we gave people the opportunity to tell us whether these behaviors, in terms of their impact for greenhouse gas emissions, were high, medium, or low. And would they categorize them into high, medium, or low? And what you can see over here is what science says. And I stress this is not my science. What science says are the right answers. And what you can see in the dark green, the moderate green, and the low, uh, the light green, is how people categorize them, what proportion of people categorize them. Now, there's two things I want to draw your attention to here. Right? One is that actually we're quite good on the, reuse, the reusing stakes. Look, reusing shopping bags, um, recycling, the things that we've been telling people to do for decades, people rank them really highly. But the more important issue is that they, they rank them wrongly. Right? They rank them highly because they've been told these things matter, but they rank them totally wrongly. What do I mean by that? Well, first of all, you can see that people aren't categorizing very accurately at all. But the second thing that you might see is that actually people think that using a reusable shopping bag for a year has a bigger environmental impact than eating a plant-based diet. Right? That's a representative sample of the Irish population. Right? So people don't know what to do. And look at the enormous choice that they actually have of different behaviors to enact. So often when we actually ask the Irish population what they think they're doing for the environment, the primary thing is, well, I'm doing my recycling, I'm doing my bit. Right? But do people understand the degree of change, what the change involves, how large the change needs to be, and so on? And the answer is very clearly, when we test it with an incentivized interactive test like this, no, they don't. Okay? Suppose people did know. Supposing people have a really clear idea that, yes, you know, changing certain types of purchases or certain types of behaviors would make an impact. So I know where to focus my fire, if you like. If I'm pro-environmental, I know what I want to do. Well, we have a paper here uh, that asks the question, if people do know what to do, can they take into, into account as consumers? So if you're trying to trade off the price of something, how much your kids like it, how long you have in the supermarket to read the labeling, um, you know, how healthy is the particular product, what's the environmental damage associated with this product or the environmental friendliness of this product, right? You've got all these things to trade off while you're shopping. Can consumers possibly do this? Well, we found that consumers can trade off at most in order to value a product. And that's what this paper's all about. It's quite a technical paper. I'm not going to explain how we did it. But essentially, when they make those kind of decisions, consumers in Ireland anyway, and I think this applies far beyond that, can take into account approximately two or three things at once at most. Right? 
So is it likely that the environmental labeling is going to get into those two or three things when you're busy running around the supermarket filling your trolley as things that are genuinely going to influence, even if you do have an intention to change your behavior and be more pro-environmental, and even if you do understand that labeling and the impacts that those things can have? Often, the study shows that people actually decide based on just a single attribute, and often that attribute is the price. So what if people can do it? What if people actually do get the environmental information into their consumer choices or into their behaviors, right? And we actually get the information. They know that's the information that they want to take into account, one of the two or three things they're going to take into account. What green attributes are effective? So we ran an online shopping environment, an online experiment, where we had people choosing products. These products were chosen for real, spending money in the environment. And what we did was we had people do that. And we tested really simple labeling versus labeling that's not particularly complex, but it's a little more complex. For those of you who know this, this is more the kind of European style sort of labeling approach that we tend to try to simplify labels and color scheme them versus this is a more American style thing that says if you want to present greenwashing, put plenty of data up there for consumers. You need to tell them exactly what the situation is. And what we find here, we also tested a positive versus a negative framing. If you frame it as environmental benefit versus if you frame it as environmental damage. I'm not going to say much about that because it didn't have much effect. What did have an effect was that even when you have consumers who are taking into account the environmental information, in, as this study shows, it makes a massive difference if you simplify it to a simple color slider. Now, of course, you know, what do we mean? I mean, someone's got to do that simplification. There are many environmental dimensions. How can you simplify everything to a simple scale? All this experiment is showing you is that you need to do that in order for it to have the influence upon people's behavior, right? So it has to get that simple. If it's even as complex as this, what happens is they worry more about the price, the quality, the habit, and the change on their behavior goes away, all right? So where am I coming from? What am I trying to argue here? What am I trying to support? All of these are studies that I've run in the last few years in the Behavioral Research Unit in the SRI, looking at the way consumers behave with environmental attributes and in general with pro-environmental behaviors. And where I get to is this. Many people want to be greener. They genuinely have no idea how to, a huge number of them. And even if they do know, in everyday life, it's too hard. There are too many things to juggle. There are too many things to factor in. The information and the science is too complicated. Education is important, but it's absolutely not going to answer this. So we measure levels of educational attainment. We've also done studies that look specifically in environmental education. Does it make a difference? Yes. How much difference does it make? About that much. Right? We can get statistically significant differences between people of high educational attainment and low educational attainment. Right? But the the difference is really, really small compared to the change in behavior we need. In other words, education is good, but ain't never going to answer these problems. And what ultimately I conclude, as a behavioral scientist who's been working on this kind of behavior change stuff for a long time, is that actually the people on the side of the argument that says individual level behavior change is unlikely to work and that we should concentrate our fire elsewhere are, broadly speaking, correct. If we place too much hope in how much we can change individual behavior, and that doesn't mean we shouldn't do it, but if we put too much resource into that, and we don't put that resource into system change, I'm going to argue, as a behavioral scientist, that the behavioral evidence suggests we're making a mistake, which makes me quite different from a lot of behavioral scientists who are going to stand up here and tell you, oh, yes, absolutely, use my science to change people's individual level behavior. I'm going to say, no, the evidence I see tells us we've got to change the system. And that doesn't mean that individual level behavior change and understanding how people behave doesn't matter far from it, because what's ultimately going to matter is how that system interfaces with individual behavior. You've got to design the system to change the behavior. And I'm going to argue that we need system level change, and that system level change has got to make it, first of all, easier for people to do the right thing. And that, for me, is the biggest one of all. You've got to make it as easy as possible for people to do the right thing. You want people to recycle, give them a free green bin, put it outside their house and say, put your recycling in here. We need that kind of solution for all of the other environmental behaviors we're looking for. Get it as easy as possible. And make it more expensive to do the wrong thing. And that's the orthodox economics. I'm a behavioral economist. But every orthodox economist is going to tell you if you really want to change people's behavior, make it more expensive. 
I would argue as a behavioral economist, yeah, make it more expensive and in the process, label it in such a way so people understand exactly why it is that you have made it more expensive for them because what that product is doing is polluting the environment. I hope that's given you plenty of food for thought. Uh, I look forward to the discussion and thank you for your attention.